as, as everybody's definitely moving to automation, the labor pool is, is, is stressing every manufacturing company. Uh, there's just no way to really be completely automated without systems like this, monitoring what's going on in the process and doing everything automatically. So can I Yes, it's MTD CNC time again, and I'm with the famous Rob Karen. You guys all know him. Karen Engineering, incredible products. Today we're going to talk Detect It, and we're going to talk AutoComp. We have the Edge Technologies bar feed behind us, and we get to learn a little bit more about why and how this is going to help you create success in your company as well. So, Rob, thank you so much for taking your very important time and spending it with us at MTD. Thank you, Tony. Thanks for uh, in, you know staying here with us. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure when I get to see you, Rob. You're an amazing, <laughs> amazing person. Now, let's get started in talking about what we're looking at here. We're looking at a bar feed. I know we always have to measure vibration. I know Detect It does vibration. You're going to go into detail of that. I've done interviews before where the whip that comes from a bar feed can be a really big issue, Absolutely. and that vibrates and that vibration translates into the part which creates chatter, shorter tool life. So Detect It will help us solve some of these problems, right? How does Absolutely. that work? So what we're doing with Detect It, we have a vibration sensor actually mounted on the main spindle going into the machine where the bar enters the, you know, into the actual uh, machining environment. That sensor can measure vibration, uh, temperature, and other things that are going on in the machine environment. In this particular case, we're actually using it to determine when the bar vibrates too much. Um, this bar is a very small bar. Uh, I can almost barely pick up the part, it's so tiny. So it's, you know, when a bar vibrates too much, they're really trying to hold tight tolerances here at Wolfram Manufacturing on this uh, installation. And if the bar vibrates too much, if there's a slight bend in it, it's actually going to cause the tool to, you know, reflect against that, which is, could cause tolerance problems, as Tony said, it could cause chatter and other issues. So the key is to monitor the vibration every time. And the way we do that is the vibration sensor using detected software monitors the running vibration. A level is set in detected that says what is, it, what is the allowable vibration before I know there's going to be problems. Detected's constantly monitoring that. When that vibration ex is exceeded, the level is exceeded, detected informs the CNC and the CNC program actually starts reducing the RPM, small amounts, continually looking to see whether it's brought the level below that certain point. If Once it does, it actually allows the CNC now to continue running. The vibration is acceptable, knowing we're going to get a good part. So this happens automatically. There's no human intervention involved in this at all. Um, the sensor that's on here, in this particular case, is looking for bar feed vibration. It could also measure the bearings of the spindle, do an analysis on them. It could also measure the temperature of the bearings as well. So it's a multi uh, sort of faceted sensing system. But in this particular case, we're really concerned about the bar. Very small diameter, very tight tolerance. The bar anomalies can happen anytime. You could have 10 bars that run perfectly and all of a sudden one of the bars had a bend in it. Someone dropped it on the floor. The vendor delivered it slightly bent. So it's, yeah, it is a guessing game. No one has any idea when this problem is going to happen. You could run two days and never see a problem and then run for two hours with a constant problem. You know, Rob, a story I've never shared before for the audience that's watching right now is when I was running a machine shop and we were running some lathes and we were running tiny parts like this in the jewelry industry. Uh, there were little beads that tiny little diamonds would go into. We actually had a bar feed that was so out of balance because the person didn't pay attention to it, the entire bar feed started whipping <laughs> and split to a 90 degree. It almost wow. hurt someone yeah. very badly. That's dangerous. We could have used your product yes, a lot. Yes, ab absolutely. <laughs> so now that we've talked a little bit about Detect, let's talk about AutoComp. Now, I saw you trying to pick up this part a little <laughs> bit ago because it is that small, guys. So I decided to do it for you just in case it would Thanks. be helpful. So when we're talking about AutoComp, what does that do for a person who wants to use it? So obviously the machine is producing a lot of parts. Thank you for picking that up. You're very the welcome. The machine is producing a lot of parts and uh, parts are constantly coming off the machine. There's only a few features on this part um, and we'll show you the picture. Uh, so there's not a lot of uh, actual features here. So it's making this part very fast. The cycle time is super short. But uh, as a part is being cut, the tools are still wearing, the dimensions are tight, and 
So somehow the tools need to be adjusted as they wear over time to maintain a good tolerance part. So with AutoComp, the operator, in this particular case, we're using a caliper, manual gauging, and the operator can simply measure the part. In this case, we have a wireless caliper, and all they have to do is measure and hit a button, and it's automatically measuring the part. So in the, the, every time the part's measured, the dimensions are evaluated, and we just need the right guy operating the caliper. <laughs> so the dimensions are evaluated, and what happens now is, and I can explain this from here. So for every dimension, depending on which one's selected, there's a tolerance, a, a uh, out of spec tolerance, meaning that's a bad part. But there's also what we call compensation limits. As long as a part is intolerance, and if it exceeds the compensation limits, AutoComp is going to automatically adjust the tool for that part. So the goal and the theory is you're just continually adjusting automatically, you're not going to produce bad parts. Now, every once in a while a tool could break or something like that, but it will be seen in the dimensional data of the part. So this can continue to run. It can be done manually with something as simple as a caliper, or it can be done with automatic gauging, which is more typical, especially when you become, you know, we're moving more towards robotic uh, loaded parts. Uh, in this case, it might be robotic unloaded parts. So AutoComp works for any one of those areas. Its beauty is it's controlling the tool offsets automatically, but it's also tracking how much it's compensating every tool. And it can actually change tools by saying it dimensionally wore, that tool wore beyond a certain amount. It's gonna automatically tell the user to change the tool, or if you have redundant tools, it's gonna to do it automatically. So it's tracking both the life of the tool and the dimensional quality of the part. Supervising enough machine shops, Rob, I can tell you firsthand that even when someone's sitting by, by a machine and they're measuring it with calipers like you just did and manually putting the offsets in, oftentimes that negative and positive thousands Absolutely. is in the opposite direction. Right. So allowing us to do this automatically because sure. the system understands it, we're removing that operator error. Absolutely. And when you look at something like a Swiss machine that we have here, there's maybe 20 or 30 tools there are different axes, different turrets, all cutting simultaneously. So it's not just typing the right value in, it's remembering which tool cut that particular dimension when there are so many tools in the machine that are running simultaneously like that. And these two products go together really well from what I'm gathering and in all aspects. I'm thinking, okay, with my tool wear, we're measuring that, but when my tool wear becomes more dull, I have more vibration. Well, we're, we're checking right. that out exactly. as well, right? So right. also, if I have some vibration in my tube, it's gonna reduce my tool wear. So obviously, all of this is a very symbiotic relationship yep. that really enhances the product output, doesn't it? Absolutely, and, and the, both systems are collecting all this data. So if you have, so all of a sudden, you're getting some a difference in your parts, and you wanna go back and see when that started. You know, you've got all this data, whether it be vibration level, dimensional data on the part, all the data is available now. So analysis of when the problem started, where it happened, is all so much easier with all these systems. All of our products really are designed 100% for automation. They're giving you real-time information, but they're also making real-time adjustments and corrections for the fact that there's nobody standing there running a machine. Uh, the system is just running automatically, and they're essential to any automated manufacturing process. Um, and then the, the, the other key point to that is the data that's being collected when things start to go wrong down the road gives every uh, automated manufacturing system a great view into what could have gone wrong or what did go wrong. Well, once I start my machine shop, after I buy my machines, you're the first person I'm calling right, to make I, sure they're running okay. I hope so. <laughs> well, Rob, thank you for conveying this information to the audience. Late guys and gals out there, I hope you've learned as much as I have today. This time for me is incredibly valuable, constantly learning something new. It no longer needs to be a guessing game. It no longer needs to be hopeful that we're gonna create the products that we want and without the scrap that we're looking to get away from and keeping those spindles running. It's care and technology that allows us to implement the strategies that we want to really improve our shops and create the output we're looking to do to be profitable, which is what we're all looking to do. So Rob, thank you so much for you, your time. Appreciate you are it. amazing. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much, Tony. I appreciate it very much.